also known as Airplane Jane. In today's video, I'm going to talk about 90 Day Fiance, why I love it, and how I actually lived that story. So, you guys know I am an American living in Canada. I went through this journey myself and I sympathize with everyone that does go through this journey. If you guys are new to following my channel, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on that notification so you can go ahead and get awesome videos like this. And if you like it, give me that thumbs up. All right, so I started my journey coming to Canada as an American back in 2010. February of 2010, I was dating a Canadian and thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start this process. I didn't go ahead and go through a lawyer because I went ahead and looked at it and I thought, you know what, this is an additional expense. I can fill out a government form, no problem. So I went ahead, started to immigrate. In Canada, you have to go ahead and apply to the province first, get the approval of the province, and then you apply to the rest of Canada. So coming to Quebec, I went ahead, I applied for what's called a CSQ, Certificate de Selection de Quebec, right? So I needed their certificate to say that I could come to Quebec, which included me filling out the form and taking a French exam, which I was not super excited about at the time, but went ahead and did it because I wanted to go ahead and move forward. So that started in February of 2010, right? So then fast forward, we're nine months into the process, and I just get my CSQ. I'm like, yes, all right, I can go ahead, I can apply to Canada, right? Well, went ahead and started the process of moving up. I was working in Philadelphia for most of my week and spending my weekends up in Canada. So it was a tough time because I was commuting to work, flying down to Philadelphia for work and flying back on my weekends. So that was a strain in itself. Thankfully, I was able to be with my boyfriend at the time. He was not yet my fiance. And then April of 2012, he went ahead and proposed. Now I went ahead and I applied to Canada at that time back in, I'd say about November of 2011. I applied to Canada and then the first thing that we heard back, okay, we need to have proof that you guys are really a couple. So 250 pages worth of proof, telephones, uh, bank account information, trips that we took together, photographs, all of that sort of stuff to prove that I was actually trying to come up to Canada. Believe it or not, it's harder for Americans to come to Canada because it's that neighboring country and they have the most illegals from the US. So. I was in the long waiting process, whereas if someone's coming from France, it could take three to six months, which is kind of crazy to me. So go ahead, we go forward, we apply to Canada. Then we ended up getting married in July of 2012 and we hear back from Canada, all right, great, you have your acceptance, send in your CSQ. So I send it in, they said, oh no, I'm sorry you need now a different CSQ because I applied as a skilled worker and now I need the sponsored one as a spouse because I was now a spouse. So my status had changed through the application process. So again, I started February of 2010. Now we're talking about roughly November of 2012 through all this process, a year and a half later still struggling with it. So we go ahead, apply for the new CSQ. Thank God it only took about a month for that to go through because I'd already passed it. All I had to do was just update the status with Quebec that I'd now gotten married. And so they went ahead, they sent that, sent it over to Canada. Then it comes to be March of 2013. I was working in Philadelphia. I was tired of flying down to work every week. As someone in the airline industry, you can go ahead and fly called non-revving. However, leaving different countries, you still have to pay the taxes. So I was paying $50 every time that I wanted to go to work. I had to pay to go to work instead of gas. It was a tax fee on my ticket. So March 2013 arrives and I thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. I really, I want to transfer stations so that I can go ahead and just drive to work. I don't have to worry about the weather, worry about maintenance delays, worry about if I'm gonna get bumped by somebody else because I was flying on a non-rev ticket, meaning non-revenue for the airline, so I could get kicked off at any time. If there was weight restrictions, whatever, I was the first person to go. So I thought that's really risky. So I'm gonna go ahead and I transferred my job to Burlington, Vermont. 
Now, if anybody knows the geography, Burlington, Vermont to Montreal is about a two hour drive, right? So I kept the job so that I would have a job when I immigrated was my plan. So March of 2013, I started driving two hours to work. From Montreal, my shift was at 4 a.m. in the morning. I was getting up, leaving at 2 a.m., so getting up at about 1.30, leaving at 2 a.m. for a 4 to 8 a.m. shift, and then I would go ahead and I would sometimes work all day if I could pick up extra hours, so I would only have to do that about three times a week, and it was really tough. You know, I mean, going through this whole process of waiting, Thankfully, we were able to see each other. We were in neighboring countries, but my heart goes out to everybody that's in foreign countries where you guys can't travel and see each other every six months. It is a grueling scenario. We were able to see each other and it was still so tough, you know, because I was like, I just want to be able to work in this country. Now, one thing that we could have done that was different is that we could have applied from within Canada as a married couple then I would have been able to get my work permit in Canada faster because I would be living here. So that is a little bit different, but it would have taken longer to get my residency. So March again of 2013, I'm driving two hours there, working, driving two hours back. It was grueling. Finally, I get the letter. Oh my gosh, I was so thankful. And it was July 31st of 2013 and I officially landed in Canada, I'm getting goosebumps right now because it was so, oh my gosh, it was so amazing to finally be done with that entire process. It was so hard and there's, you know, there's nothing that I would wish upon my worst enemy. It is so tough. So my heart goes out to everybody. I mean, I would check the process to see how long it was taking, what date of applications they were checking on the Canadian websites, and for everyone dealing with it with COVID, I know it's backed up an extra three to four months. I'm sorry for that for you guys. It is so tough, but love knows no bounds and it is possible and you just have to attack it day by day. So that is my story. I became an official resident up here in Canada, July 31st of 2013. And then lo and behold, our little one, first one was born August 3rd of 2014. And that's when I came to day trading. So that's my story of how I came to day trading and my immigration story. So again, anybody that's going through it, my heart goes out to you. You can see it's still even emotional today. All right, so if you guys have any questions, anything else you wanna learn, put it in the comments below and let me know your immigration story. I would love to hear and I'm open to listening to what you're going through because I walked in your shoes as well. All right, have a great day. Thanks guys, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.